Hey, what's up? It's Oren Harris, transformational leader and high performance coach. Here to talk with you today about one of my favorite subjects, one of my favorite things to experience and also to mentor and train people on, and that is flow, also called the zone. So this video is on flow mastery, and I don't use the word mastery lightly. And I would define mastery, very loosely define mastery as it pertains to the to the flow and being able to consistently tap into the flow, to be able to tap into the flow in every area of your life, these are characteristics of mastery. And then third, and probably the most bold statement that I can make, but it's based on my own personal experience, is being able to tap into the flow at will. So since this is a public video, I, I will briefly describe what the flow, what the zone actually is, just in case you're not already familiar with the term. So I'm talking about that space, that state of consciousness, that way of being, that way of experiencing life that we've all experienced at one point in our life, if not many points in our life, where you're in the right place at the right time, you feel connected to all of life, you are in a peak performance state of consciousness, you're really being your best self. Life is effortless, it's graceful, things are manifesting. You're just like on the top of your game, feeling inseparable from what it is that you're doing. And it is a magical and powerful place. So that's the flow, that's the zone. And for years now, many, many people have been hacking the flow, really asking this primary, these primary questions. One, what is it? And two, probably most importantly, like, how can I get more of it? Like, I want more flow, I wanna tap into the flow. I wanna be in the flow, I wanna be in the zone more often. Especially if you're in any arena of performance where you are performing, you know, as an athlete, as a musician, as a CEO, as a business person in your business, uh, in your service to the world, like, who does not want to be operating in a peak potential state, doing the best that they can? So, that being said, what I'll first start with is that perspective is important. You know, knowledge is power. Many people say that applied knowledge is more powerful, and I do agree with that because it's like, it's putting the knowledge in motion into action that really makes it meaningful. But proper knowledge in and of itself can really be important and can be a game changer just by the knowledge alone. And so one of the top misperceptions about the flow is that you're separate from the flow. That the flow is this, that there's you and there's this thing, this magical thing, this mystical thing called the flow and you're trying to get into it, right? You're trying to tap into it. And as harmless and subtle as that may seem, that, that misperception, whether you're conscious of it or it's in your unconscious mind, somewhere in your belief system, somewhere deep down, you fundamentally think you're separate from the flow, that is gonna be one of the things that is gonna keep you from being able to be in the flow consistently, to ever be in their life, I mean consistently. And being able to tap into the flow deliberately at will will be almost unattainable if you have that misperception. So that is one of the number one pieces of information is that you are not separate from the flow. It's like a radio station, right? You know, you tune into like 96.5 and then you're jamming hip hop, right? And you're just like, you know, this is the hip hop station, right? And it has an infinite variety within that one station, but it's all just, it's all hip hop. It's that type of flow. And then you tune over to 101.6 and it's classical music. Here's the thing. <laughs> so now you're in the classical music universe you know, you're in that flow and there's infinite diversity and variety and creativity within that, but it's all classical. It's a station. The hip hop didn't go away once you're on the classical station and vice versa. So it's important to understand that, like if you think that you're gaining and losing the flow, then that is a perspective that's saying that you're actually separate from the flow. That's like saying that when you're on the hip hop station, you've actually lost the classical. When in fact, really you can be in the flow or you can be out of the flow. You can be tuned into the flow or you can be not tuned into the flow. You could be allowing it, you could be blocking it, you could be going with it, 
You could be going against it, but the flow doesn't disappear. And so to use the radio analogy a little bit further here, it's like who you really are, and this is essential, right? You can hack the flow and look at the flow on a level of uh, body, mind, and spirit, right? This would be more of a spiritual perspective, which is actually where the core understanding is necessary to be able to master the flow, is that in the radio station analogy, who is it that's tuning the station? Right, you like the hip hop station, it's really powerful. You know, it may be really amazing. The classical station is really amazing. And so it has a level of power to it. So states of being, states, there's an infinite number of states, states of being, emotional states that you can experience, but who is tuning the dial, that's where your core power is. You are the consciousness, you are the one who is through your attention, through your, uh, through your consciousness, you are breathing life into, you are giving life to a particular station, AKA state of being. And when you do that, that station comes alive and now everything you see is hip hop, right? So another way to look at that is that you as consciousness also really are animating your own sense of what you call yourself. And your, as you know, your own perspective, which includes all of your biases, your judgments, your fears, your likes, your dislikes, your beliefs, major part of the equation. Who is it that gives life to that? That's the you who's behind the scenes tuning the station. So it's really essential that you come to discover that aspect of yourself. So you can't gain and lose the flow because really fast forward, spoiler alert, <laughs> The realization, and I don't mean information now, the realization, and this is something that happens over time, is that you are the flow, right? That's good. That could sound like some kind of like out there philosophical, almost uh, useless piece of information, but it's important to at least understand that, that you are the flow. Because when you believe that you're separate from the flow, then the I, the identity, the mind, if you're trying to hack the flow with your own identity, then it will continue to elude you, right? When you're looking at it from that perspective, then the identity, which is the story of you, is going to be like, ooh, I got the flow, or, or I'm in the flow, I'm not in the flow, right? So how can I be in the flow more often? So if you're trying to hack into the flow from that perspective that you're already separate, that's because you're looking through the separate self. This is why, this is why it's, so, it's like, whew, slips out of your fingers the moment you're in the flow you're in the zone in a moment and your ego mind your identity same thing oh ooh, what did i do look what i did so there's no i in flow there's no i in flow that is a major secret to the flow there's no i meaning identity not that your identity is bad but your identity is a collection of experiences that you call yourself a collection of uh you know, an accumulation of experiences, information, opinions, biases, conditioning. This is everything that's happened to you that you identify with as yourself. So consciously or unconsciously, deliberately or accidentally, <laughs> by some cosmic force or by an act of grace or through wisdom, somehow when you're in the flow, the I with a little I disappears and the bigger I, which is like your infinite self, I also call it your true self, it, it, it awakens, but it's already there. It's already there, it's already you. And so all of the resources that previously were blocked out because you were looking at the world, you were identifying with the world through your little sense of self, and I don't mean little to demean it, I'm just saying little like your limited sense of self, the I disappears. This is why when people are trying to hack the flow, they're like, I don't know what I did, I don't remember. So you don't wanna just fl hack the flow from a mental state because you're looking actually through the identity trying to you know, reverse your steps and like, okay, what did I do, what did I do? So there's no I in flow, that's a major clue. So one of the things that you can conclude from that because there's many things that you can do 
with your mind, with your brain, with your uh, all kinds of things that you can do that will help you to tap into the flow. And there's lots, lots of really good information on that, but it's key to understand what's actually happening is all you're doing is anything that's going to get you beyond your own sense of self. So you have to lose yourself to really open to your greater self, which is connected to all of life. And then you'll experience the flow. You'll experience the zone much, 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 much more often. So this is why, and actually <clears throat> I will state this, like even when I put record on this video and I hit the video, I don't have any notes planned. I don't know what I'm gonna say. I'm actually speaking to you about the flow from the flow. So there's an element of trust involved. But here's the thing, if you're gonna build trust, which implies that it's an exercise, something that you can build, you gotta also know what is it that you're actually building. Just like when you're going to the gym, you're like, I'm working on my biceps, I'm working on my triceps. You know, if you approach the ho, the, the, ho, the flow <laughs> holistically, then you're building different muscles. And that's why I said you can build it on a physical level, on a mental level, and on a, you could say a spiritual level, on a level of consciousness, which is probably the most important level to tap into if you're gonna be in the realm of flow mastery, where as I said, you can be in the flow consistently in every area of your life and be in the flow deliberately. All right, so you wanna be able to build that. So how do you build trust? And what are you trusting in? Another key. What you're not trusting in is you're not trusting in your mind, which contains all of your past knowledge and experiences. And that's the wisdom of your experiences where you gain a sense of security, a sense of empowerment, a sense of safety. These are things that are known to you and these are assets. I'm not saying to replace these or that these are not useful to you, but I'm saying if you are in the consciousness gym and you are building more trust in your infinite self, then to your identity, that's like stepping into the unknown. And so becoming more trusting in your infinite self, or you could say your intuition, your spirit, I'm really saying the same thing, is something that you can consciously, deliberately train just the same way you train up on any other area. So trusting, trusting in the moment, which is really being present which is what's happening right now as I'm speaking word after word after word. The more you trust the unknown and do not resist the unknown, because it's only the identity that feels secure in what it knows that resists the unknown, that, that fears the unknown. But one of the things that you realize, the more you begin to deliberately practice putting yourself into the unknown, which sometimes looks like just being present and trusting, not in what you know, but just trusting, the more you actually can know. Because your intuition, which is connected to infinite intelligence, there is an immense infinite intelligence and infinite knowing that opens up that you're not separate from. So practicing being in the unknown. And so any angle that you approach on the zone or on the flow is some level of getting beyond your own identity, your own sense of self. For example, on a mental level now, training your ability to focus and to concentrate, because when you're in the flow, there, you tend to have a high level of focus and concentration, while at the same time, a sense of absolute relaxation internally, right? And a supreme confidence that's natural and a level of presence. But all these things naturally happen when you are not rooted in your identity or in your mind, which is where all judgment, fear, and separation are perceived, and the sense of self, you know, our limited sense of self that can be threatened or perceives itself as separate. And so it is key that you get beyond yourself, and you can do that deliberately. Meditation, this is why meditation is such a huge practice if you want to experience the zone more often, if you want to experience the flow more often. Because in meditation, where you start to let go of and start to relax and start to just become the witness of the self or even the, you know, the 
uh, repetitive stream of thought going on in our minds, what's happening is that when you create that space and you're able to just start witnessing those thoughts without labeling, without judging, without, because when you label, when you judge, you actually give life to, you actually put energy, you actually put power into. So when you start to create that space more and more, you start to awaken to your infinite self. Or you could say, like, like the you who's actually looking at the mind, the observer, is the same you that's that back is looking at the different stations, going, hmm, I could be on this station, I could be on this station. So obviously there's more power in that you, you is consciousness, the you that's beyond your identity, there's more power there than any kind of power there is when you're inside the station. So the ability to choose, the freedom to choose, is actually more powerful than any choice that you're making. So really, what I'm saying about the flow is, and people ask me, I speak around the world about the flow, people ask me sometimes about being in the flow and there's this eagerness to be in the flow and it's like, what's more powerful than actually being in the state that we're calling flow? What's more powerful than that is to know who you are when you're in the flow and to know who you are when you're not in the flow and that is the wizard behind the scenes the you is infinite consciousness who's able to animate any particular state of being. So it's important that you're not judging one as positive or negative, even though you wanna be in flow more and it's experientially more positive, right? Because of its expansive nature, because of the level of freedom and because you're actually you know, manifesting at a very high level your own intentions and what it is that you're desiring to experience. but not putting a, uh, a judgment on one state or the other because when you do, you're actually in the mind, you're actually in the identity because only your identity, only our identity is seeing things in polarities, right? So you are the one, when I say know yourself, and this is why this is the spiritual awakening angle of the flow. And the single, I would say the single greatest secret, and it's not really a secret, like people ask me, you know, Oren, how are you able to be in the flow consistently and in every area of your life and tap into the flow at will? What is it? And of all the things that I can say, of all the ideas, of all the tools, of all the perspectives, of all the things, I would say that the singular thing that is most important and what I would attribute my ability to consistently be in the flow is I know myself beyond any, the ups and downs of life, being in the flow, not being in the flow, this station, that station, this station, that station. I know myself, I am very rooted in who I am beyond my identity, that space of the unknown, that infinite space. I'm very comfortable in that space. If you want, you could say, I trust in that space actually more than the certainty that I could gain from my own knowledge and my own, my own mind, meaning my identity. And so this is the number one <laughs> secret, if you will, to the consistency of flow. Because what happens is, is that at any given time, your sense of self, if you're really strongly rooted in it, as that's who you are, the you that you see, the story of you in your mind, then if, if the flow is trying to take you in one direction, if it's trying, the flow is trying to open up and you know, your identity is uncomfortable with being in the unknown, then you're really actually gonna be fighting the flow, which is like fight, fighting your true self. And so all of the obstructions to the flow occur in the mind. This is why if you can meditate and get out of your mind, you're gonna get into the flow. And that's a really good practice. But overall, an overall practice of awakening is really where the consistency comes. Because then you don't have to keep battling you know, your identity. It's almost like your identity, your sense of self, gets more and more like liquid versus ice. Like, you know, like ice is very solid and then liquid, it's more malleable, it's more flexible, it's more flowy, right? And then vapor is even lighter than that. So your spirit, you as spirit, the infinite consciousness that you are is like vapor and that is who you are. 
that is your natural essence. And so when you start to become more like that, more consistently and trust more in that aspect of you and live more from that intuition and really start to gain a stable sense of trust in that and, and view your perspective on who you are as that more than you do the story and the collection of ideas that you've accumulated, when that happens, then naturally you're gonna be able to be in the flow more often. And in any area of life, when you approach, it doesn't just have to be in your specific, you know, field or craft or whatever it is that you're focused on, which by the way, one of the reasons that we're able to experience more flow in one particular area is because whether we're conscious of it or not, we are willing to give up our self, you know, in, in favor of the passion and maybe the healthy obsession that we have for being really exceptional at that thing. And so we're able to lose ourselves in that thing. Or another way to say it is that we come in uh, in love with with something. So that's why people who truly love what they do are going to experience more flow. Or if you ever fall in love, what happens when you fall in love? You drop from your head, which is the sense of self, the identity. You drop from your head and you're more in your heart. When your heart's wide open, you're connected to your spirit, which means you're connected to the flow. And that's why especially when you first fall in love, you know, and your partner can do no wrong and, and you're just seeing them through the eyes of your heart rather than through the judgmental eyes of your mind, then when you first fall in love, that's why like you feel unstoppable. When you feel unstoppable, you'll see that other areas of your life start to really excel and take off and expand because you're allowing more flow. So love is another master key to the flow. Love, like unconditional love. Love is our natural state, it's our true nature, and that is where we reside when we're in our heart. So these are things that you can consciously make a part of your flow uh, zone hacking practice is build more love, awaken more love, come to trust in. So all avenues that point to whatever it is, whatever you want to call it, that exists beyond your sense of self, you start to really, you know, allow the true self, the true self to take the driver's seat in your life. You could call it God, you could call it the infinite, you could call it your higher self, your true self. It's the self that exists. It's the connection that exists beyond the identity. And what I'm saying is that you can come to really live more in that space just as who you are because it is who you are so a lot more i could share with you but that feels good for now my name is oren harris signing off peace